Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. Thank you so, so much for tuning in today. I'm Goliath, the artist, author, and creator of the Al Goliath Tarot Deck. Um, and uh, you have tuned into my channel uh, that I've just recently started uh, two or three weeks ago. Basically, we talk about all things tarot, all things witchy, all things occult, all things spiritual. And uh, it is real life tarot, coffee, and tea chats. And uh, you do get my perspective on a lot of different things with spirituality in the tarot. So thank you so much if you're just new to my channel and you're tuning in. Um, as you may or may not know, I kind of go through each card in the deck. And we also look at the traditional meanings of the read away deck as well, or of the archetypes of the tarot. And we've really ripped through this channel, guys. Like at the moment, I think we've got like... Shit, I think we've got like five cards left and then I've done all 22 of the major arcana cards. I will be coming back to revisit the uh, Hierophant part two and the Devil will also have a part two as well. Uh, a lot of people have been messaging me about the the Devil part one and um, yeah, I've got some questions. I'm probably going to be doing my question video at the end where I basically um, go through a lot of the questions that have come through. I've been saving them all so I can get to them. So if you've asked a question and you've sent a question in, um, thank you so much. Thank you so, so much. I will be getting to those questions. So please stay tuned. Um, a lot of them have come through on Instagram. Uh, if you'd like to find me, I am on Instagram just at Al Goliath Tarot. So yeah, Al Goliath Tarot deck. Um, I'm over on there. Um, and uh, also, I will also mention that uh, I'm, the last two days of my sale, which are happening, it's going to end on uh, on Saturday. That's Australian time. That's the 9th of March in two days. Currently, I'm having a 30% off sale of the deck at the moment. So that's only on the main website. That's not on Amazon. So if you just like to go to www.thealgoliathtarodeck.com, you can pick up a copy of the deck and it is 30% off. There is a discount code that you'll need to apply, which is all in caps lock. And it is Goliath 30. So that's the discount code there for the, the sale that I'm having this week. Um, okay, so I think we're just kind of going to jump straight into this one. It's pretty obvious we are doing the High Priestess. And a lot of people have been waiting for me to do this one. So um, I think we might actually today, just to break things up a little bit, I might actually jump into the guidebook and read what I wrote in my guidebook. And then we're going to come back and have a look at the traditional meaning of the... Um, of the High Priestess card. So yeah, I'm just gonna have a sip of the tea and I'm just gonna start channeling. How are you guys all doing? What's happening? What's going on out there in the world? All these little baby shamans and witches and mystical beings. Yeah, it's not easy being a mystic. Yeah, it's hard, man. You know, I, I know, I'm, I'm in the same boat as you guys. <laughs> So I think we're just kind of going to start here. So basically this is, you know, it's card number two and this is the High Priestess. So I'm going to pick it up and we're just going to jump in and then we're going to go from where I don't really have a script. I just kind of go with what I feel. So anyway, so the High Priestess um, sits and waits and she is all knowing and she is all powerful. And for this energy of this archetype, I decided to go with a cat energy. And the cat is a very patient predator. It is a predator that has mastered self-discipline. And this is a predator much like an owl. Like, you know, you could be walking through the forest and, you know, a cat or, a, you know, a hunting type of cat, you know, one of the big powerful cats, like they could be in the bushes and you wouldn't even know, you know, you would never even see it coming, if that makes any sense. So this is an energy that is the, in, the, in the traditional sense of the high priestess. This is the divinity of the feminine. It is the, the uh, Benar energy. And we looked at in the traditional, you know, when I went and did the Empress card at the start of this series, we looked at the three archetypes of the female, which was the maiden, the mother, and the chrome. The high priestess is very much the maiden energy. This is a virginal energy, and it is astrologically connected to, you know, Cancerian in the moon, in the crescent moon energy, but it is also very much connected to Cancerians and also Virgo energy, which is the self-preservation energy that we find a lot in the Virgo archetype as well, astrologically. Like I've said before many times, guys, don't get too caught up in the astrological signs that are correlating with the major arcana cards or any card for that matter in the tarot, because we are all, you know, we all manifest the fingality traits of all star signs. 
and that, you know, we know that now. So the energy of this is purely of the divine. It is purely a mystical being. And in my depiction, I decided to go with a three-eyed cat. Um, my relationship with this card has always really been, you know, very strong because I am, I look, I do identify as medium. I am able to channel energy and energy has memory and we are able to, I am able to tap into my inner temple and, you know, I'm able to take care of myself, you know, in that mind, in my mind, in my body. Um, you know, a big believer of, we looked at the star card, mental health, it's very important. And in society, it seems that we've got gyms where we go to work out our bodies, but, you know, we get our bodies in shape, in healthy shape, but where's the, where's the gyms to work out the mind? So this energy for me is like an inner temple. And it's really about, you know, developing your higher sense of self, developing your ability to connect with spirits, dimensions, realms. It's like, this is astral travel stuff. This is high priestess energy is, you know, the vessel, the gatekeeper of knowledge, the gatekeeper of intuition. Well, I mean, the Hierophant is the male counterpart to the high priestess, and that's the gatekeeper of knowledge. The Empress is the gatekeeper of um, life, you know, the, in her beautiful womb, in the womb energy. And then the Magician is the, um, the creator of bringing something from the non-physical into the physical. So, Anyway, so it's important. We've got to work out our mind. We've got to have powerful minds. And in the spiritual community, I often hear the question or the term that's mentioned to describe it, like, are you awake yet? And that's the thing, like most people are just sleepwalking. They're not really fully conscious of the world that they're living in, or they're not conscious of what is going on in the world. They're not really prepared to see the truth of things or face, you know, what's going on out there you know, in, in the world that we're living in, like what the fuck is going on, you know? And so the high priestess is really about heightening your own extrasensory perceptions. It's about, you know, being aware of your environment, being aware of where you are in the world, who you are in the world. And it's all about that, you know, the third eye, which we'll get into a little bit later. There's also, you know, connecting to the chakras and, um, you know, we know the crown chakra is the one that, you know, comes through. This card's also connected to the pineal gland as well, which, you know, is a gland that really is basically like a dormant volcano. And sometimes that gets activated and sometimes it doesn't. But yeah, I mean, you could probably just go on YouTube. I'm not going to go too far into the pineal gland and explain that. I mean, you can just Google that stuff if you want now. So uh, yeah, it's, I think a lot of people are having the wake up moment and, you know, people are coming out of the delusions and, and illusions of being in a fear-based lack mentality and being controlled by other people. So, yeah, so I think that's a big part of, you know, summing, summing it up. And I think people are waking up and they are hungry for esoteric tools and the high priestess energy is very much connected to that as well, where it's looking for, you know, things that we can use, that we can use as divination or reading books and getting education. And, you know, this could be anything to do with anything witchy, or it could be, you know, you're wanting to develop your imagination, you're wanting to work on your creativity. And, um, yeah, so the three mother, you know, the mother empress in the tarot, and then we've got this, you know, the virginal energy, which really hasn't really had sex yet. And it is about self-preservation, which is what I see in this archetype as well. It's like a doorway or, you know, it's like we saw in the Hierophant energy when we had the, um, the Hierophant was guarding the, you know, the pillars. Now we've got the Empress here who has this beautiful veil behind her as well, where she's kind of, you know, she will share knowledge. She, the, high, the High Priestess energy will share what she knows to people. She won't hoard information or, you know, hang something over someone to oppress them, if that makes any sense, which is what we see a lot in the Hierophant energy, particularly around churches and stuff like that. So it's do as I say, not as I do, or, you know, I'm, I'm in a position of authority to you because I know something that you don't know. And then we've talked about that in the Hierophant card. Go back and rewatch the Hierophant card. We looked at the, you know, the relationship between the student and the teacher is not a relationship of equality because one does sit higher than the other. So anyway, but for the main part, the, the high priestess energy is really about accessing the unconscious mind through symbols, knowledge, dreams. She's a representation of serenity and higher learning. And it's really the gatekeeper and lifting the veil, you know, letting letting information pass through. And this, you know, this could actually be, you know, directly correlating to a person that you know that you might go and see readings for or someone that you go and see, um, you know, to get their perspective on things. It could be a seer, it could be a, a medium, it could be you know, any type of intuitive person that you could go seek for higher knowledge. 
um, and maybe they can see things that you can't see because they've got that, you know, in between our two eyes, we've got the third eye, which is able to transmit that data and that information and bring it through. So the High Priestess is very connected to light and dark. And she is like the teacher and decipher between constructs of what is right and what is wrong. Um, and we'll get into that a little bit further. <clears throat> I do see the archetype of witch here as well. Like the archetype of witch is very much embedded in the consciousness of the high priestess because it's a person that hasn't conformed to society and had kids and kind of, you know, witch energy for me is like being one with the earth and worshipping nature and paganism and it's like you know they live on the edge of the village you're on the fringes of society and they do readings or they live in a witchy hut and you know the townsfolk really condemn the witch but they really you know secretly wish that they you know they go off and book her for readings <laughs> it's like it's always the way i've had people that really condemn what i do as a reader and then they'll you know they'll actually come and see me i've seen this happen many times and it's interesting but yeah, so the High Priestess is, you know, very much connected to her own sense of self. And that's why I like the idea of the cat. It, the cat is very independent and the cat has its own motivations of going through life, knowing what it's doing, its, its agility, its grace. You know, the cat archetype is why I went with the cat for this. It's because they have a heightened sense of alertness. And, you know, cats can be predatory during the night, but cats have a really magnificent mystical presence about them. And cats are full of secrets. You don't know where they go or what they get up to in the night. You know, we don't know. Little kitty might look really cute during the day, but kitty kitty can be a lethal, you know, lethal hunter at night. So, and I think that's kind of ties in with the whole moon thing, which I'll get into in a minute. So, yeah, so the history has been, you know, the history of this archetype has been very much connected to the Egyptian star, Egyptian energy. So it does have that touch of Egyptian um, goddess Isis in there as well, which was, um, you know, in the artwork that was very much like the the face paint that I put in here as well. And I just I made a reference in the earring that's hanging from one side. So it's got that kind of, um, you know, Egyptian, um, you know, basically paying homage to you know the construct of that where it came from um her third eye is a symbol of a crescent moon around it which is you know it is a tribute to you know it could be a tribute to the religious constructs because some of moons are in hieroglyphics as well and so i think this is kind of like you know i just had a lot of fun with this card and drawing it i really enjoy drawing this cat the cat's actually based on a cat that my friend has and and i like the idea of making the eyes kind of like snake like and kind of like this you know, extra sensory being with this kind of magic that's coming around the cat and the full moon in the background. And I did pay homage to having the pillars on either side, which I'll get into a little bit later when I go into the traditional. So I like to keep it, you know, it's an abstract take on the, on the high priestess and I really enjoyed doing it. So anyway, so I'll read out some key words and then we'll jump into the traditional meanings of the of the traditional card. So this is an inner wisdom. It's about knowing. It's about seeing. It is about observation. So sitting back, watching. I do feel the high priestess energy is a bit more passive in, in nature. The high priestess energy is just a little bit more reserved. Um, this is about channeling. It's about activation of the, of the third eye, obviously, the brain, the mind, you know, bringing, merging them together, merging the body, merging the mind, merging the spirit. Um, this could be a mediumship development. It could be, you know, really working on your heightened sense of awareness. You could be doing like gymnastics. You could be doing some level of balancing on working on your body as well. It could be a mediator, a counselor, um, someone that's really able to make decisions and really weigh up the pros and the cons. Being two in the number two in the major arcana, we did talk about in the justice card that the justice card does directly correlate with the high priestess. So the high priestess will not go into a situation unless she knows like the full story. Like she wants to get her facts straight and she really will acquire as much data and information on something so that when she moves forward with her decisions in the mental she knows that it is absolutely correct. Like when a cat goes to, a cat won't pounce on something unless it's like within its range to do so because the cat has, a, has mastered the discipline of understanding what it's capable of. And that is very much um, high priestess energy here. So yeah, it's the inner reality of being able to bend reality to your own will. You know, having the sheer will and force to do stuff like we see in the strength card and really, you know, this could be developing supernatural abilities. You know, this is very much about mental expansion. 
um, the, the types of gemstones or crystals that I'd like to work with would probably be like, I like seashells. I get a lot of seashells a lot. Um, I would use pearl, like, you know, abalone shells that would use for saging. Um, I would use selenite uh, for the high priestess, turquoise, torbaline. I really would use, and obviously, like for me, probably more than anything. I mean, look, just put that purple near that image, like amethyst all the way, like amethyst, 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 like I love amethyst. It's a universal one for me. I just love it. You know, and I also use a little bit of lapis lazuli uh, as well. Look at that beautiful blue. That would go well with the high priestess, anything. I uh, just look, look, when it comes to like picking and choosing, um, you know, crystals that you'd want to work with, I mean, just go with what you feel. Like if it doesn't feel right, then don't go with it. You know, choose something that really matches the archetype uh, of what it is that you want to work with. Clear quartz would be really good. Um, just straight up crystal. Wow, you know, just holding that, I just felt something then. Um, yeah, crystals are the DNA of the earth. So, I mean, obviously, whatever goes with whatever you feel is right. Um, you know, I, I, for me personally, I mean, I've laid on the floor for like hour and just kind of put this crystal on top of my head and just tried to meditate and really kind of be one with it and center myself and ground myself and try and keep myself grounded. As a creator being, I can like drift off into space quite a bit. So I tend to try and not do that as much and try and stay, you know, a ground. Well, try and stay in a balance of not being too far up in the ether. And yeah, so I think that kind of um, explains the artwork. I am going to try and keep this video a little bit shorter today. Um, and now we're going to kind of jump into a bit of a deeper chat. If you guys want to go a bit deeper with me into the, uh, into the archetype of the High Priestess, then now is the time for us to do that. So... Have a sip of the tea and we'll have a look. Okay, so first of all, we know that the, the High Priestess is a two. So the energy of two is quite, um, it's a structured energy. We also see any even number is of structure. So we know that is also going to occur in the Emperor, where the Emperor's got four pillars. It's the pillar that holds something up. And so there is structure in here. We see that the pillars that are built up is like a counterpart to the Hierophant card. And that is about a building of acquired knowledge. It takes time to, to acquire a level of understanding and knowledge of things. Uh, so the Empress, uh, sorry, the High Priestess energy, well, the Empress energy is coming out of this one, but yeah. The High Priestess is about harmony. It's a receptive energy. So remember we looked at the, in the Kabbalah, we have Bena, which is the divine feminine and Hukma, which is the divine masculine. So this is very much about receptive energy. It is not in like action, action, action. This is more of a passive evaluation type energy here. And so we also know that this is the, you know, the unconscious mind and intuitive awakingness that comes with this. And that's what comes to my mind straight away. Listening to your inner voice, you know, really taking the time to tune in and enjoy life through, because if we're running around like a headless chook all the time and we're just like flat chat nonstop, that's going to stress us the fuck out. And if we're too passive and we're sitting back doing nothing, then nothing's going to ever happen. So it's that whole equilibrium of balance. And I'll get onto that with the pillars when I explain them a little bit in the, further on in the video. So in the, the Hebrew, um, Hebrew has, a squad, has acquired 22 letters in Hebrew. And I believe it is Gmail, which is the reference to the high priestess, which is like a high a hieroglyphic. Um, it's like a line that you see on Sephira, the, the tree of life on the Kabbalah with all of the different yules. Um, in relation to the high priestess, what it is, it's like um, it's like a, a tree or a straight up line that's got a fork going out this way and a fork coming down at the bottom. So it's like an antenna. So it's receptive energy coming through, but it's also grounded and it's got one foot that's supporting it upright. So that would be to like that is connect. That is a direct correlation to the high priestess in the Kabbalah, in the um, in the uh, basically in the Western Hermetic, uh, like yeah. In the in the, I'm looking more guys just for the ref, just for the record. When I talk about Kabbalah, I'm kind of looking more at the Judaic way um, in the Western philosophy. So if that makes any sense. So, yeah. So um, this is really like putting aside our ideals of who we think we are or what we think we can do, and really just knowing what we are. This is about knowing who we are. It's about knowing where we came from, and it's really about tuning into basically the unconscious mind. This is a receiver and a transmitter. And that's when we come back to that reference in the pineal gland. So, you know, we know a lot of foods, a lot of things can fuck up the pineal gland or block it. 
things like toothpaste, things like fluoride, things that are found in water. Um, you know, it's very much said that, you know, there's a lot of conspiracy theories out there that there are a lot of foods and a lot of things out there that are put into food to keep us basically docile and unable to access our third eye. So, and just for the record, I'm going to say this as well. Um, a couple of weeks ago, I decided to cut meat out of my diet and I'm talking like red meat. And since I have done this, the amount of clarity that I'm getting in my mind is unbelievable because I'm not eating something that's dead. I'm eating plants. I've lost weight. I feel good. I feel clean. I feel sharp. It's like coming out of that purification energy that we saw in the star card. And it's like I'm applying that in my readings and I'm getting very good downloads. Like the accuracy that I've gotten with my readings and my downloads and my meditations have just been like on the point, like fucking on the ball. And I really do believe it's because I cleaned up my diet. And I was looking at the star card the other day when the last video that I did, and it's really makes sense. I mean, you've got to look after yourself, your internal gut health. They say that your stomach is your third like brain. Yeah. So anyway, so back to this. So yeah, we know that, you know, getting that pineal gland, you know, activated, getting it clear, you know, doing, it's like looking through a filthy window, you know, like, I mean, that's what I get like behind her. I don't know if it's a stained glass or it's a veil. It is a veil, but I feel like, you know, if you're looking through a really dirty window, that's always like, you know, you're eating shit food. You're not really taking care of yourself. You're drinking, you're smoking, you're partying, you're just fucking around and you're not really honoring your body. What do you think? Like, you're going to obviously have results. Like, your skin's going to get all fucked up. You're, you know, everything is fu- like it all, everything's connected. Whatever you put in your mouth, it's going to have a consequence on you. So, you know, so yeah, clean the window, get, get clear. Get, and I'm not just talking about saging and saldo pantu. I'm talking about internal clearing of the brain, you know, getting rid of all the debris, yeah, in your brain, all that unhealthy thought patterns that really slow you down. Get the fuck out of that, you know, and access your unconscious mind. Let yourself go there. So this is like the energy of the high priestess is a reference to not about the moon pointing at us, but it's more about the high priestess is pointing at the moon. She's a seer. And this is a person that we could come to that we need that, you know, archetypal force that can help us. You know, she might be someone that is into divination or you're trying to get into tools. Like this card could show up a lot around someone who's getting interested in the tarot. It could be someone who's getting interested in, you know, self-help and self-actualization. So they're pulling in the tools. They're doing the research. Maybe that's why you're here watching this channel right now. My, you know, hello. You might be looking for some extra help. You might be able to pick up something you haven't learnt yet. So I hope that you do. And um, yeah, so you could be finding someone or seeking someone to help guide you or you're looking for the inner seeker that is in with, within you. We see here in the traditional card, we've got a reference. It's got that Catholic cross on it because it is a high, you know, it is a high priest, a high priestess. So it is, yeah, it's obviously coming from that Catholic background. Um, we see a, a woman sitting here. She's got white and blue robes. They're flowing. She's very comfortable. It's kind of a little bit like the Empress energy. This is a person who is sitting in a place of elevation. So they have that wisdom element to them. And um, it's, you know, she's encouraging you to connect to your unconscious mind. She's not going to do the work for you, but she will help you on your journey. It could be a wise person that you've come across. Um, but they're not going to, you know, give you all the answers. They're going to point you in the right direction, maybe in a cryptic way or a way that you'll be able to understand and decipher between what is sign and what is not. Um, we see the crown here with the moon crescent. It's also got a reference to the full moon as well. We've got that down here as well. I also see a pearl energy here. So this is like the unseen things. It's like you're taking the time to open things up to get that pearl, the wisdom that comes within it. And I feel like that's connected to the world card as well. Um, we also, yeah, we see the crescent moon, which is caught up in the bottom of her robes as well. And it's also got a bit of a ripple, ripple effect here. It kind of looks a little bit like water, which means it's mastering emotions and quieting the mind and kind of letting the, you know, the unconscious ripples of things come into your, you know, surface. It's like, for me, the high priestess, it's like diving into a lake. And, you know, if you want to go down and see what's at the bottom, you're going to have to dive deeper under the surface and look at, you know, go under there because, you know, that's where the Jung thing is. We haven't, you know, that's all the answers lie because we haven't searched there yet. So yeah, there is a richness to the high priestess. It's a great sense of depth. Like I said, this is not an action card. This is a card of evaluation and being a little bit more reflective, a little bit more passive. It's not super active. And um, yeah, so it is about communication. Um, 
this could be, you know, the shadow side, it could be, you know, obviously of the high priestess is obviously the reverse of this energy, which would be that you, you know, you're just not, you're just racing around too much and you're not really letting yourself do the internal work that you need to be doing. Uh, we also see two pillars here. So we see one with B and one with J on it. So the B is, sorry, yeah, so the B is for passivity and the J is for action. So, and we see that we've got the white, see, see, the white letter on the black um, column and then we've got the J which is on the white column. And this is kind of reminding me, well, this is a reference to the yin and the yang. We can't all be too, you know, sitting in all yang and no yin. So it's a little bit of each other. And we see that in the yin and yang symbol where it's got like one's got a little white dot and one's got a little white dot. So they've both got elements of each other. And this being in reference to that is about the feminine and the masculine. So all beings have masculine energy and feminine energy, including men. We all have it. And so, you know, if we all just go too far into the masculine, we don't have any feminine left. So we go too far in the feminine, then we, you know, so it's it's that it's that equilibrium of balance that needs to happen. And that's what that reference is reminding. It's reminding us of duality, which is we see that a lot in life, black, white, yin, yang, night, day, positive, negative, spiritual, mental, and it goes on and on. And it's just kind of reminding us of that, you know, there is both, like there is good in evil and there is evil in good. And we are both, we all have both inside us. And to sit in one and ignore the other is completely going to fuck you up. That's not healthy. That's not realistic either. So yeah, so looking at the unconscious mind and working through things, you know, and, um, you know, getting yourself unstuck from situations that could, you know, because you didn't really do the work to really understand how you felt about something before you went into it. So that could be a part of it. Yeah. And you're giving yourself time to rest. It's about that inner knowing. It could be um, looking inside yourself, keeping your mouth shut for a bit, you know, really doing that inner work, meditations. Um, you could be doing psychic ex exercises like, um, you know, like standard ones with friends where you, you know, put, say, say a number or a letter. It could be like an activity that I used to do a lot when I was developing my psychic abilities was I would put a card underneath my pillow or underneath my bed at night. And then I'd wake up in the morning and I would get the card out and I would try to have channeled what the card would be. And then I'd like flip it over and go, oh, okay, so it's the strength card. And that's what I got or I didn't get. And then really work on that. Like that's, uh, you know, things like that, you know, really... Um, can help strengthen because like psychic ability is like a muscle like the more that you use it the stronger it's going to get like rep repetition builds inner you know inner ability so it's about getting into your higher self and really forming a better quality relationship with your own psychic abilities um, that's definitely much and listening to the voice within you because we are all intuitives guys like we're all intuitives whether we're mastering it or not, it is a choice to develop our inner, you know, this is our inner clairs. You know, it is the clair, but for me, probably the high priestess is probably more like cognizant, like the cognizant, the knowing, um, you know, the clairvoyancy is seeing, the clairsentient is feeling. There are more clairs now, but for me, this is more clair cognizant. It's more knowing and it's about knowing inner potentials of things as well. And I hope that kind of made sense. So yeah, we know that the um, the high priestess is, you know, understanding. It's like a bookkeeper or a record keeper. This could also tie into past lives. It could tie into the Akashic records. It could tie into, you know, information that was stored that was kind of like inactive that's waiting to be activated by a trigger that could happen. That happens a lot in life. I've noticed that as well. Um the other day, I was actually watching a TV show and it was so unbelievable that people have walked past each other in the street or they've been driving down a highway like opposite ways and um, they've just happened to like catch each other's glance and then the other person, they just both stop their car, do a U-turn and come back and get each other's phone numbers because it was like something that was waiting to be activated was there and it was just like that little spark, that little look at each other and they just knew that there was a connection there. Like that is total high priestess energy turning the car around, going back and saying, excuse me, this might sound really weird, but can I get your number? Can I ask you out? Like, and like you just feel intuitively that there is a connection here and that, and having it re reciprocated back to you, like that is high priestess energy. You know, this could be like in my earlier days when I was coming into my abilities, I would say things or know things or feel things. And, you know, after a while, people start looking at you and they're like, fuck, 
or they could be even they're trying to use you as well remember we've looked at that in the previous cards or when i've explained it is that a lot of people that you know are not mastering their own intuition will rely on people that are more intuitive or you know inclined that way that used to happen a lot to me at school or you know being you know with kids other kids you know people try and you know it's it's a shadow side of having the gifts but having this gift and, and activating it but we've all got gifts we can all activate our own higher self and you know so listening to your intuition you know intuition is really about it you know in and really understanding that so looking into your own inner wisdom and joining inside yourself uh, like in and journeying inside yourself you know and that's what this is about mysteries it's the unhidden things and the moon energy that comes in the high priestess is mysterious it has cycles like you know when it goes through those different cycles it's like it's dark until it gets full like in between those stages it is dark we don't know what's there so it's like being in the night and not knowing um when you're walking through a forest it's like um you know, we know what's there and what's not there. Like it could just be the light bouncing on the tree, but it might distort the tree in the way it looks. It could look like a monster, but it's actually not. It's just a tree. Like the mind's playing tricks on you and the discipline of the high priestess, you know, like priests and high priestess are supposed to be really fucking disciplined. Like they're, they're in a relationship with the high cosmic energy or God. They're not meant to be like part of their celibacy is they're not allowed to fuck. They're not allowed to have sex. They have to be in a relationship with God or the universe, or whatever you want to call it, so that requires discipline, and it's, I won't go into the shadow side of the Hierophant, because I think we've been there enough, and I'll probably come back and talk about that in part two, so yeah, so I hope that kind of made sense today, so it is the gatekeeper of principles, it is a gatekeeper of really going into your inner moon and understanding the unconscious like letting you know sitting in your own inner reflection what you know what's going on here that's what paying attention to how you feel you know and also reaching out to people like reaching out to you know pulling information in that you need like you know i used to go to the library a lot you know back in the day before the internet i used to go to the libraries and get books and photocopy pages I was wanted to understand the tarot. I wanted to understand like zodiacs, astrology. And, you know, I just kind of went with what I could and whatever I had access to, I try and utilize that. I get a, a free library membership and I would go sit in the corner or sit on a beanbag and just read. And I was just hungry for information and hungry for esoteric knowledge. And um, I found some great books, you know, over the years that have really helped me and uh, helped me understand um like the majors a lot more, but also, you know, understanding how astrology and planetary alignments and how it all, you know, the universe and stuff like that. I fucking love this stuff. So yeah, so I hope that kind of made sense. I think we're going to keep this video a little bit shorter. So in a nutshell, I mean, obviously it depends on what else is coming up in the reading or what the intention of the reading was. Um, but the high priestess really speaks for itself. It is letting down that veil and it's allowing, you know, allowing knowledge to come through and sharing what you have and letting people know, like, you know, we don't want to be too, um, you know, sitting in the masculine. We don't want to be too much in the feminine. And that's why I wanted to go with more of a softer energy in my artwork for the El Goliath Tarot deck. Um, and yeah, it's channeling. So this kind of is a little bit of hermit energy attached to the high priestess, like, you know, just, yeah, just being a bit more reserved and you know doing that in a journaling um i guess so i hope that all makes sense today and if you've enjoyed this video please give it a thumbs up like share subscribe um i, I am putting my work out there this is a self uh self-published deck so i've got to kind of do my own marketing and put myself out so if you want to check it out you can still go to my website www.thealgolifetarotdeck.com you can pick up a copy of the deck it is on sale like i said at the start of the video 30% off until Saturday. We've got two more days left on the sale. And you can also pick up a copy of the Algolife Tarot Deck on Amazon as well. It is also on Amazon. We are it is shipping worldwide. And it's a 95 card deck, all hand drawn in grey lead pencil. And um, I got, well, I'll, you know, I'll let you guys go for today and we'll see you in the next video. I hope that you've enjoyed this one. And I'm not sure what the next one is going to be. I don't know yet. Um, I'm kind of ripping through this series, but we'll see how we go. Maybe we'll do the, the Emperor card. I haven't done that one yet. Maybe we'll do the World. I don't know. <laughs> but yeah, Namaste and uh, blessings, Shakti, beautiful souls. I will see you in the next video and take care. Bye, guys.